In 2008, Atomic Energy Council under the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development was established with the mandate to regulate peaceful uses of atomic energy in Uganda. The power of the atom is used for the benefit of humankind for diagnosis of diseases, treatment of cancer and other diseases, breeding healthier livestock and developing high yield crops that thrive in extreme conditions, security scanning systems, boosting food supplies and protecting fruits and animals from harmful pests, nuclear technologies and research, preservation of food and blood, electric power generation. This is the Atomic Energy Council. The Atomic Energy Council of Uganda has since inception been regulating the peaceful applications of atomic energy in various sectors of medical, industrial, education and research, and security. Since its establishment by the Atomic Energy Act 2008, the AEC has provided oversight for the nuclear sector to ensure that safety of the public and workers and security of the radiation sources is not compromised. AEC uh, is the national regulatory authority of the country for overseeing uh, the safety and security of radioactive sources and also uh, applications of uh, nuclear energy. In, uh, in 2002, there came into existence the energy policy of Uganda, which required the establishment of infrastructure for regulating nuclear energy. In the implementation of that, the Atomic Energy Act 2008 was enacted, which actually established the Council as a corporate body under Section 4. And this was also entrenched in the law in Section 13. And therefore, uh, now it is a working is functioning as a regulatory authority and uh, meeting the standards of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The major functions of Atomic Energy Council, uh, we develop regulation standards and guides. We review applications from users of ionizing radiation. Uh, we issue licenses and permits to facilities that intend to use this radiation sources. We conduct inspections for compliance. Uh, we do enforcement at uh, non-compliant facilities. We monitor radiation workers in these facilities and also radioactive waste management. Since we came into place, we have expanded our activities to ensure that all the sectors within the country are properly regulated. We carry out inspections to ensure that the people who use these devices and the machines are well qualified. Because in radiation protection, there are three things which we consider. Optimization. It means these people should get the lowest dose, so long as uh, it cannot cause any problems. Justification. Yes. These people around who are they just try to get the, 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 the exposure. And then also there is another one which is only uh, for medical, which is time. Where we, 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 it's required or recommended that the exposure time should be limited, should be as short as possible. In the execution of her mandate, Atomic Energy Council has been supported by the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, a global agency that promotes the peaceful use of nuclear science and technology energy, but impedes its use for any military activities, including nuclear weapons. In alignment with this, government has to ensure compliance of international standards in every step of the way they take. Therefore, the safe use of radiation in various fields has been a topmost priority for the Atomic Energy Council. What you see around here is an interim storage facility for orphan and disease sources. Uh, this facility is part of the systems for ensuring nuclear security of radioactive sources 
Uh, when you come to Dosmitre Laboratory, we have a number of equipment we use. First, the equipment may be classified according to the purpose. The purpose may be safety. That is general protection of the public, the patients, and the occupational workers. Then the other purpose could be security. For detection of the active material which may be present or which may be contaminated or sprayed somewhere. We do our inspections in various ways. First of all, there is observation. We just observe what is going on, how the facility is, and then we interview the person who works there, and we also do review of the documentation. But then also, within the layout, we look at where the operator is. Is it protected from the radiation that comes from the machine? So we have to ensure that where it is always, there is either a mobile shield, or they are constructed for him a cubicle and there is no radiation that goes to where it is. We need to look at records of like that was military monitoring, they are patient records to see if they actually cover the KV, the MAS and the FFD that is taken. Well, we look at their quality control program, their uh, correspondences and any and the logbook for repair. And then we go on to look at other things like the protective gear. This one we have, they need to have this, they need to have the thyroid shields, and then they also need to have the gonad shields. We also verify the numbers of each of those. And then the other thing is we continue and do the tests, uh, quality control tests. And then we look at also the scatter radiation and the collimation of the machine. We make sure that all those are within range that the machine performs well. In medicine, Radiation sources are used for medical diagnosis and treatment of various diseases, including cancer. Thousands of medical facilities around the globe now use these radiation sources to diagnose and treat a variety of diseases. The commonest, which is common here, is the cobalt-60. Cobalt-60 is a radioactive element which gives out radiation all the time. When we control the radiation, we are able to direct it to the area we want it to treat and kill those cancer cells. And we are able to measure how much those we want to give using that machine. In that process, we are able to protect other normal tissues, concentrate on the sick cancer cells, kill them to the dose we want. We have other machines like what you call linear accelerators. These are machines which are made and they are similar to X-ray machines, but it doesn't have enough energy to kill cancer cells there and then. We can still make even smaller sources which we can put inside where the cancer is, within the human being. Radiation sources are also used as gauges for the control of production operations. Manufacturers use the sources to monitor the fuel level bottled drinks, moisture and density of soil and detecting cracks in welded joints using non-destructive testing technology and also in oil and gas prospecting. Radioisotopes are used as tracers to monitor fluid flow and filtration, detect leaks and gauge engine wear and corrosion of process equipment. In this process, there is no mechanical contact to the material, but there is continuous measurement of the products without stopping production. For example, if you have a bottle, we have a maximum and minimum tolerance to send our product to trade. If it's an underfill, it will be rejected. If it's an overfill, we'll also kick it out. So using this ionization radiation, only the good bottles will pass. For ionization, it's this particular unit in the middle, which has also our mark, telling everyone who is around this area that this is harmful energy around. In road construction, nuclear gauges use radioactive sources to measure the moisture and density of aggregate and soil. The nuclear density gauge it is one of the first, fastest methods of determining the compaction in grounds. In case it is not used properly, there will be emission of radiation spray and everybody around will absorb them. In agriculture, a unique use of radioactive isotopes has led to increased productivity in a sustainable manner. It's also used as a research tool to develop new strains of agricultural crops that are drought and disease resistant 
have shorter growing time and produce a higher yield with high quality. We are using mutation breeding as a tool and using this tool we are actually investigating different parts of the plant and we are using gamma radiations at different dosages. These are seeds of cassava. They were exposed to dosages as high as 450 gray and were able to produce plants. If we compare with the, those that we grew from seeds that were not irradiated like this one, this one already has clear signs of the disease, as we can see. The leaves are mottled. This is clear cassava mosaic disease, so it is sick. Now, when I compare it with the, this plant, this is a plant from a seed that was irradiated at 450 grays. It looks very healthy, and so far it has not shown signs of disease. So maybe we are moving towards where we want. To control some diseases such as Nagana in livestock and sleeping sickness in humans, radiation is being used to sterilize mass reared sessiflies so that they cannot reproduce to spread the disease. In terms of preserving food, irradiation is a new concept with similar results to freezing and pasteurization. This reduces insect and bacterial contamination to extend the shelf life of perishables. During this procedure, the food is exposed to doses of ionizing energy or radiation at low doses. In the security sector, ionizing radiation is used to scan luggage and cargo. Therefore, safety measures must be in place to make sure that it doesn't expose workers and travelers to high levels of radiation. Also, some devices such as metal detectors use non-ionizing radiation to scan persons at access points. At major border crossings in Uganda such as Kusi and Malaga, X-ray cargo scanners and radiation portal monitors are used to scan cargo trucks that enter the country every day. The Customs Non-Intrusive Inspection Unit here uses a drive-through radiation monitoring system to scan goods to identify any non-declared goods in the cargo. Atomic energy in form of non-ionizing radiation is used for long-range telecommunications, broadcast, medical diagnosis, and in domestic appliances. This is the spectrum analyzer, and it's used basically to test for electric field strength and power density for emissions from telecommunication systems. You know, things like the mass which you see over there, we use this to determine how much uh, radiation, ionizing radiation is coming from it. So we, whatever measurements we pick from this are compared against the international safety standards which we have adopted as a country. Despite the usefulness of the atom, we must be very weary of the threats such applications could pose to our environment and the people, if not well managed. When it becomes radioactive waste, then arrangements should be put in place to send it back where it came from. Two is to temporarily restore it until arrangements are made to either take it back or it is taken to a final disposal facility. So far, I think we have about 40 such sources which have been taken back. They are not in the country. And to prevent any possible nuclear accidents or attacks on our country, the AEC is always on standby to advise government on how to avert any would-be threats. One, to have a strong regulator, which is independent, which can make decisions without any interference. Two, is for the government to invest more in nuclear security. Say that all the goods that come in the country are first checked to ensure that they don't involve or they don't comprise of nuclear material. Now, for any materials within the country must be under regulatory control by the usual authority. Whereby it must know where is the radioactive source, who has it, in which position, where is it stored, all the time monitored. In addition, nuclear knowledge is so critical nowadays. To support the AEC's work, 
Macquarie University offers a wide spectrum of courses and research in various disciplines. It trains students in nuclear and atomic physics at undergraduate level, at postgraduate level, at master's and PhD. Atomic Energy Council conducts inspections and facilities that use ionizing radiation to ensure compliance with their regulatory requirements. Over 90% of facilities in the country have been inspected at least once since 2011. However, for Atomic Energy Council to fulfill its mandate, there is need for continued support from government in terms of equipment, staffing, radiation safety laboratories, among others. The government is considering to include nuclear power into the energy mix by 2032. Atomic Energy Council is making necessary preparations to regulate this industry upon commencement. The president has said we shall not sell our uranium, we shall use it for our own benefit and we, that's why we are developing this nuclear program and we hope in the next decade we shall have a, a useful purpose for, for our uranium. The government has also signed an intergovernment agreement with a Russian firm, Rosatom, to help them establish nuclear infrastructure and technology in the country. To keep the nuclear energy vision in tandem with the required international standards, government is reviewing all existing laws to incorporate the production of nuclear energy. At that time, when we put that act, we were really looking to regulate sources of radiation in the country. But now we want to go further, as I've already said, we want to produce electricity from nuclear, so that is not covered in that act. Atomic energy information is now available everywhere through various outlets. Exhibitions such as this one is held periodically to educate the public on what the AEC does. According to the Atomic Energy Council, the unfolding of a nuclear age has a tremendous effect in broadening scientific horizons that benefit society. Since 2008, the regulatory body has made great strides in achieving some of its objectives. It's important to appreciate the fact that no nuclear accident has occurred. And this is because of our vigilance. The establishment of the regulatory system for inspection, authorization, and occupational monitoring. Because as we talk now, most of the facilities in the country are being inspected at regular intervals. Or most of the facilities that are known to be operating and have met the minimum who have been licensed. And most of the radiation workers which have been registered are being monitored. We have developed uh, regulations and safety guides. We have also acquired equipment to support our regulatory work. The government procured 11 acres of land to establish the headquarters of the regulatory body. Another achievement is that interim storage facility. Many, many countries in Africa, for example, don't have these facilities, yet they have sources. Our staff, I'm confident to say that they are trained and they know what they are doing. Because now the IEA uses some of them as experts in its mission to train others. Like another project would be, all this has not come without challenges. We are supposed to have laboratories to do our contamination testing, to do a number of analysis, but we lack these labs. Lack of awareness of our, our people in this country when you mention nuclear everybody gets frightened so that has been my biggest challenge in trying to oversee this uh, very scientific uh, sector to see that atomic energy continues to serve us effectively and to encourage its many peaceful uses to be employed to the fullest all stakeholders must get involved with great responsibility to support the AEC in all its endeavors. We need them to put in place safety measures in the operations. They should use 
the right equipment for the operations. So they should use only technically and the professional people in their operations. And also, very important, is to operate when licensed. We want cooperation from the public as well. And uh, there are sometimes sources which enter country illegally. So we want our people also to be on the lookout for such sources. But otherwise, it's a safe and useful application.